Hi everyone, Ollie here, welcome back to the channel. I am a final year medical student at the University of Warwick on a graduate entry medicine programme. This is just going to be a quick update vlog style video. I've not done one of these in quite a long time, so just to catch up with exactly where we are now. But before we jump into that, I've got a deal on at the moment with Dr. Phil Malloy, who wrote How to Draw Anatomy. Uh, one of my favourite kind of undergraduate medicine anatomy books. This isn't a sponsored deal or anything. Phil just reached out and said, I would like to offer your viewers um, a third off all purchases of my book for the month of December. So obviously a great Christmas gift if you're still looking for stuff, but it's good right up until the new year. And you can use the code OLLIEB33. That code will be on screen and in the video description at howtodrawanatomy.com to save 33% off the purchase price of the book. So if you're looking for something for the medical student in your life or something your parents are struggling with something to get you if you're a medical student, it's a great book. I really highly recommend it. I would certainly have loved it uh, in my first few years at medical school. So, <laughs> vlog time, hello. There's basically been an awful lot uh, going on. Since I made my last kind of vlog update video, I have been through both my obstetrics and gynecology and paediatrics blocks, which each need their own roundup video, which I'm gonna film this week, but I'll kind of be drip feeding these out with time just to let you know about those blocks in more detail, those specialty rotations. And as of writing, I'm at the end of my paediatrics rotation with only one specialty rotation, uh, which is medicine, essentially, care of the medical patient, in between now and finals, which is just absolutely terrifying. But for the last few weeks, what's been most acutely in my mind, what I've been dealing with um, mentally, is the AFP, the Academic Foundation Programme. This, uh, again, I'm going to do a full video on how medical job applications actually work. There's a lot of acronyms and it's very complicated. But the AFP, the Academic Foundation Programme, is a thing that about 5% of junior doctors will do in the UK. And unlike normal foundation jobs, which are six lots of four months across six different specialties, so you might do, I don't know, cardiology, paediatrics, surgery in your F1 year, and then you might do emergency medicine, vascular surgery, and respiratory medicine or something. That might be a very typical foundation rotation. The academic foundation program removes one of those six jobs and then replaces it with an academic rotation, which is based in one of three things. That can either be most commonly in research, so you get protected time to undertake original research or work on a project that's going on in your hospital. You might do leadership um, because we need more clinical leaders, uh, doctors who are trained in leadership styles and in management, so leadership and management, or the third type, medical education, which obviously is protected time for not only teaching, but more for developing your own teaching skills and potentially undertaking some formal training uh, in teacher education as a clinician. And the way that this process works is it's completely uncoupled from the normal job application program. So while the rest of my colleagues um, alongside me, we all applied for our foundation jobs, we kind of won't have to think about that again until February, March. If you're wanting to do the Academic Foundation program, it's a highly competitive process which includes these interviews. And there are some things you have to do. So you complete what are called white space questions, which are usually four to six, um, maybe 200 word question and answers that each academic unit of application, each deanery, um, so these are the locations in which you might wish to work, each of them has their own set of questions that they like to ask applicants. So you will normally fill out two sets of those for each of the deaneries that you can apply for. So you can apply to up to two uh, deaneries for the Academic Foundation Programme. And these might be things like, tell me about your teaching experience, tell me about a research project that you worked on, uh, what do you think is the biggest problem in medical education at the moment, or something like that. They're all themed around the programmes that they run locally, which is why each deanery has their own. So you'll complete two sets of those, assuming that you want to apply to two academic units. You may wish to only apply to one, if you're only interested in going to one. And then that information is combined with what's on your academic CV. Specifically, it's thinking about publications, presentations and prizes. So if you have published anything, so that can be papers in a peer-reviewed or non-peer-reviewed journal, uh, presentations, so that's conference presentations, have you taken your research 
through and presented it either as a poster or as an oral presentation at a national or an international conference, which is easier than you would think as a medical student. And then prizes. So that's have you won any academic prizes, essay competitions, uh, oral or poster presentation prizes at your conferences, merits for doing well in medical school, distinctions. All of this type of stuff is all lumped in with your white space questions. Then, then that information is used to shortlist you for interview. And then if you get an interview, um, obviously the interview is going to be is going to be the vast bulk of what decides whether or not you end up getting those academic jobs. So bringing this back to me, I applied for AFP jobs in the Northern School, and that in practicality is the northeast of which Newcastle uh, with the Royal Victoria Infirmary is the hub. So I applied for jobs there uh, in research posts because they don't actually theme their jobs in the same way that most of the rest of the country does. As I said, um, each deanery is kind of a beast unto its own with, with how they divvy up where their jobs are and how you apply for them. So with Newcastle, um, they have one job that is themed in medical education, but it's still a research post. So I applied for all of the research posts available at the Newcastle RVI. Uh, so that was one set of my jobs. And then for my other set of jobs, and this is where it gets even more complicated, I applied to the seven academic unit of application, which in practicality covers both the peninsula and seven foundation schools, which is what people would normally apply to on a non-academic program. There are fewer academic units of application than there are foundation schools. Then I had to apply for this list of jobs, which is spread out essentially between Bristol and like Exeter down to Plymouth and Cornwall. So I applied for two sets of jobs within this school, which is research jobs at Bristol. I only applied for two posts and I applied for medical education jobs between Exeter and Cornwall um, effectively. And what that meant is that I actually had two separate interviews for that academic unit, one for the research posts and then another for the medical education posts. And I, I realise this sounds incredibly, incredibly complicated, but in practicality, what it meant is that last week I had three interviews. I had Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday for these quite high stakes interviews, each of which took a lot of dedicated preparation and planning. I was getting up at half past five every morning just to make sure that I had time to prepare because remember, I'm still on my specialty rotations while all this is going on and having to get my sign offs and you don't have any protected time to prepare for these interviews. If you're doing the AFP, you're kind of on your own. Obviously, the medical school can try and support you, but you've still got other responsibilities that you need to be meeting. And that was tough. One element was just having the time and the headspace to dedicate to these interviews when we've got finals and the SJT and everything coming up. You've got a lot on your plate. Suddenly you've got a huge workload and you know, you need time to practice with seniors and with your housemates. Which brings me on to the next point, which actually is that it felt very, very similar to applying for medical school again, purely for the reason that there's this whole collection of information that, that clearly you're expected to know for the purposes of these interviews. And I prepared using a couple of books. Um, I can't see them around me, but a couple of really good uh, AFP interview preparation book. And you just need to know these quite complex and intricate sets of information. So whether that's particular guidelines or principles of research ethics or, you know, the Helsinki Declaration, and you need to know good medical practice inside and out. A lot of it is, is quite intuitive, but there are some things that you really need someone to tell you that you need to know them. Otherwise, there is no real reason to think that you would know them um, as such. And I actually found that quite frustrating because there's no, there's no resource really that can tell you you need to know this, 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 this and this um, definitively. It's up to whatever each deanery decides they think is important. So what does this mean for me? It means that assuming that I'm successful in getting an AFP post, which is obviously very competitive and I don't know, I feel that my interviews went quite well for what it's worth. Definitely doing something similar for AFP w with regards to what I've done with medical school interviews already, trying to put a free set of simplified resources out there 
doing that for the AFP, if I am successful, is something that I'm very keen on doing because I think it suffers from a lot of the same problems. Um, there's a bit of a sort of hidden curriculum problem um, with it, and it's very, it's a very nepotistic process to the point where if you don't have someone who understands the process helping you, you're kind of screwed because most people do. And so it, it selects against people who don't have that kind of support network. And some medical schools are a lot better at that than others. I don't feel that we've been badly done to at Warwick at all. The support's been really quite good. However, obviously newer medical schools and less academic as such medical schools or medical schools that have a, a lower track record of getting people onto the AFP will be far less able to actually support any new student who wants to try and go for it, especially if that student doesn't know any doctors that have already done it, for example. But all that said, I find out on the 13th of January, because all the jobs have to be released on the same day, so I'm in the running for essentially three posts, and I will find out on the 13th of January whether I've been made an offer for any of them. I could accept or decline those jobs, that's completely up to me, I have 48 hours in which to do so, and in theory, I could then know where I'm going to work for my F1 and F2, uh, should I pass finals and everything else goes according to plan. On that note, uh, Warwick have been, I think, very, very considerate in giving us a safety net for this year. Basically, they've said for both my year and the what are now second years, who should be in third year, but they've not sat their exams yet. Um, there's a safety net in place which means that no student will be removed from the programme on the basis of academic failure this year, just purely because of what's happened with Covid. And certainly I feel as a final student that the lack of clinical exposure that I've had over the last, I don't know, six months owing to Covid and obviously plus all the time that we were off. There are just so many things that I could go into work as a junior doctor never having seen on account of clinics all over the place being cancelled, patient attendances being down. There are things that in a, in a normal year that I would have been expected to see just because common things are common. Not obviously through anyone's fault, but the patient volume has just been so low and the patients that we've been able to see have been a subset of that low volume. So there are just so many conditions that I've never seen and do feel underprepared from that perspective to become a junior doctor. Um, obviously I hope I can still pass finals and do my OSCEs and all the rest of it, but this has really been a spanner in the works, I think, for, for clinical learning and it's something that we'll have to think about the effects of moving onward. And then the last thing, speaking of moving onward, I am now on a week of annual leave because um, I had to book it before the end of the year, so I, I'm off all of this week because on Saturday I have a quite high stakes exam in the form of the SJT, the Situational Judgment Test. This is very similar to the one that if you've applied for medical school, you will have taken when you did your, your UK CAS, your UCAT, which has this professionalism and ethics subsection to it. The SJT that you take at the end of finals is, uh, the SJT that you take during your final year is very similar, um, obviously a bit more complicated and it's a lot more related to what actually happens in medical practice and what you'd be required to do as a junior doctor. But the SJT in simplified form contributes 50% of the total score that is used to allocate final year medical students to their post as junior doctors. Thankfully the Academic Foundation programme is completely separate to that and if I got an academic job my SJT score would mean absolutely nothing. However, if I choose not to take an SJT, however, if I choose not to take an AFP post or I'm not able to gain an AFP post, then that score will become very important and it will form a very large part of the, uh, the score that's used to allocate me to my deaneries of choice. At the moment, I'm a little torn and I still have time to change my, uh, to change my choices on where I would go in a foundation job. I would either like Newcastle or Oxford, I think to be my, to my, I think I would either like Newcastle or Oxford to be my top choices and I haven't really reached a decision yet on what I'm going to do, but I've got time yet. But 
that was just a quick video to keep you updated with what's been going on in, in my life. And there's a lot more things to talk about. But um, those of you who are going through your med school interviews at the moment, and many of you have been reaching out to speak to me about that and ask for last minute tips and advice and things. I really do feel for you at the moment because I'm going through the exact same process myself. It doesn't get easier. You maybe get better at planning your time and knowing how to prepare, but the stress and the anxiety and all of that doesn't go away. And it, um, it's it been really refreshing in quite a sour way, perhaps, to, um, to be going through all that again. But that's where I'm going to wrap this now to stop this going on forever. And remember, guys, OllieB33 to get 33% off your copy of How to Draw Anatomy. Phil is a fantastic guy with a fantastic product. If you need a last minute gift for yourself or someone else, it's a great choice. I can't recommend that book enough. But thanks very much for watching, guys. Please be sure to hit that like button for me. Leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check out my website, ollieburton.com. For more free videos just like this and tips and hints to help you land that place at medical school. Take care and I will see you next time.